Well, hi everybody, it's Rusty here again, and today I'm going to look at the question of whether it's easier to finish the Appalachian Trail as a single through hike, an extended hike, or do it over the years by sections. Interestingly, when I talk to through hikers, a lot of them say what I'm doing is harder, and when I talk to section hikers, a lot of them say what the through hikers is doing is harder. Well, I'm going to go over the pros and cons of each, and then I'll render an official decision at the end. Well, for this discussion, I'm going to be comparing uh, a through hike, um, and I'll define what I mean by a through hike. Uh, in this case, I mean either an end-to-end -end hike or some sort of flip-flop, but, but really completing the, the hike of the Appalachian Trail as a continuous hike, uh, you know, not something where you essentially section hike over the course of a year. And then, of course, a section hike is a hike over part of the trail. So to complete the Appalachian Trail as a section hiker, you've got to go out there many times. So let's look at uh, what exactly is a through hike. Now this is actually from an earlier video I made uh, where I talked about some of the aspects of this. Um, is it an end to end, one direction, uninterrupted? Uh, well what about side trips or emergency interruptions? Like suppose you're getting married and your spouse wants you at the wedding and you've got to get off the trail, go to the ceremony, and then you can get back on the trail. Is that a through hike? Or what about the flip flops? Um, there's actually an Appalachian Trail Conservancy de definition that says if you do the whole trail within a 12-month period, no matter how, then that's a uh, that's a through hike. And then, by some legal definitions, a through hike is simply a hike through an area. Well, I'm really going to be talking when I say through hike. I'm talking about these first three definitions. So here are some of the hardnesses, as I call it, uh, of doing a a end-to-end -end through hike, whether it's a flip-flop or or direct. Um, finances, uh, I've seen estimates of anywhere from three to six K, you know, a dot one, two, three dollars a mile uh, on the trail. Um, so that can be an issue. Um, there is a time commitment. It's going to take between four and a half and six months, depending on how many miles a day you go. Um, there is the logistics of equipment and resupply. Um, the uh, equipment, you're kind of, you've got what you've got at the beginning of the hike. Yeah, you can swap some out. As a matter of fact, a lot of hikers do because they'll be hiking in a cold weather uh, months for part of the hike and then it'll get into warmer months and they, they actually switch out their sleeping bags and that sort of thing. Uh, but there is uh, that kind of logistics. Uh, however, one good thing um, about it, well, I'll get to that when we get to the, the easinesses. Um, there is an unrelenting physical demand on the body. Uh, repetitive motion injuries are, are always uh, something to be uh, watched out for. I actually see that a lot. I see a lot of through hikers when I'm out there on the trail and a lot of them are all bandaged up or they're at a hostel and they're icing body parts. Um, just uh, just that, that constant, you know, think about it, 2,200 miles of hiking. Now, I didn't really have that problem so much. My longest hike was 566 miles, but I really think that was probably the, the limit as, as far as I could go before I'd start getting that sort of injury. And then, of course, there's a time constraint because if you're doing this as an end-to-end -end hike, you've got a maybe a seven-and-a-half-month seven window to fit this four-and-a-half to six months in. Um, just because you, you've got to beat the weather, if you're going south to north, Mount Katahdin, you know, shuts down at latest October 15th and, and sometimes earlier, depending on the weather. Now, the through hike easinesses, well, the logistics of it being a single hike, you've really only got to get uh, to the end of the trail once and off the trail on the other end once. Now, if you're doing a flip-flop, okay, maybe you're doing it twice, but... Uh, when we get to talking about section hikes, we'll see where, where that's actually a much bigger problem for the section hiker. Um, you can get your trail legs. I mean, you know, you're out there, if it takes two or three weeks to get your trail legs, well, after three weeks, you're, you're, you're in the groove and you can actually uh, move along pretty well and, and, and be physically tuned uh, for what you're doing. Um, you have a clear goal, you have a time frame, and you have a destination. 
And there are social aspects to the trail. I, I hear a lot about tramilies. Uh, because of the way I've hiked, I haven't actually uh, you know, fallen in with a tramily. I have met a few friends and uh, I keep in contact with them, but I don't have that, uh, that big social uh, aspect. It can actually be uh, self-reinforcing where you help each other uh, with encouragement. Uh, people you see you know, day after day, even if you're not formally hiking together. Um, the section hiking hardnesses, well, there is the logistics, um, you know, because you've got to do several hikes. You've got to get onto the trail at the beginning of each of your sections, and it can be a problem. For example, sometimes I feel the only way to get to Damascus, Virginia is by dropping out of an airplane to get there, um, and I've had to go down to Roanoke several times, so there, there's that logistics of especially the farther away from you get from home. It's just not one trip. For example, I live in Massachusetts. It's not just one trip down south. It's several trips down south. And that can be logistically uh, a problem and financially that can be a problem. Then we also have the problem of conditioning, a lack of trail legs. Um, if it takes a week and a half to two weeks to get into condition, you're only out there for well, if you're only out there for two weeks, uh, then you never really get your trail legs. And even if you're out there uh, for five or six weeks, yeah, you've got trail legs for a few of the weeks, but you, you don't get like the economy of scale that the through hiker gets. Um, for section hiking, what's easy about it? Well, it's an open-ended time frame. Failure is kind of temporary. For example, this year I had hoped to go from uh, uh, Roanoke down to Springer Mountain. I fell on loose rock, as many of you know. I dislocated a shoulder, had to get off the trail. Now, I was a little disappointed, but uh, my niece, uh, Crazy Boonies, uh, pointed out that I still knocked off uh, quite a bit of the trail. I did one-eighth of the trail. Um, so, and the failure is only temporary because my goal wasn't to do it in a year. Well, my goal is to finish it eventually, and um, the trail's still there, and I've got a little bit less than 600 miles left. I've done... Uh, about 16, a little more than 1,600 miles, around 1,600 miles. Um, equipment and learning is actually easier because I'm not committed to the same equipment. As I went out and I discovered what worked best for me, I replaced equipment for the next hike. And, and I, I, they call it dialing in your equipment. I've had many opportunities to dial in my equipment. A through hiker has to actually dial in their equipment before they start their through hike, uh, for the most part. Um, so. Um, I've actually taken my early hikes as opportunities to learn uh, more about what works for me and, and, and what's best for my physical condition, for example. I, I am in my 60s, um, and I found that my, my limit is when I've got my trail legs is about 20 miles a day, but I don't have to relearn that every time. I mean, that, or, you know, that's just something I, I, I've built up to. Uh, there is less physical stress. Like I said, uh, I never really had a repetitive uh, motion uh, injury out there. Um, like I said, the injuries I've had were just, you know, a fall. That can happen, and that's uh, just not, uh, that's not from overuse. So I, I did, I have to admit, I did twist a couple ankles on my 566-mile trip. Uh, but uh, that... <sighs> Maybe that was repetitive use, but it was like near the end of the trip. So if I were keeping it under 500 miles, I'd probably be, be all right. So there's a lot less physical stress. You, you never really have to push that boundary because you're not extra motivated to stay on the trail and push on when you know you can just go back. You know, the saying, the trail will be there next year. So I'm going to render the final decision. Is through hiking or is section hiking the uh, entire trail harder? Well, let's have a drum roll. And the answer is... So do you agree with me or disagree? Well, leave a comment and let me know what, what you think. Which is harder? Is it through hiking or is it section hiking? Thanks for listening.